right, the time is uh, 8.35. The day is um, December 13th. Uh, and the lesson is uh, Shaking Off Fear, session two on page 17. Uh, so good morning to everybody. Uh, it is always good to hear you guys, uh, to, uh, to see you guys, for those of you that I, you can see, to hear you guys breathe on the phone, you know, for those that I can't see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, um, you know, just uh, always a, a good feeling. It's, uh, it's going to be a little, it's going to be a little weird uh, when, uh, when we go back, I'm, I can't wait to go back to the church house, but it's just going to be a Amen. little weird. Amen. You know, Amen. I see y'all in a box, uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> y'all face to face. But we can't wait to that day. We can't wait to that day. Um, it's coming. So, it's coming. It's coming. Yes, that's yeah. right. Right. Yeah. It's coming. Uh, it, is, uh, it is coming. So um, for those of you that um, have the book, again, our our lesson today is on page uh, 17, page 17. Um, and I want to exceed, I know Brother Walker's on here. No, I thought I saw Sister Ford coming here before I get started. Good morning, good morning. All right, all right. So, uh, uh, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. And then if my um, teachers can unmute as I say every week, if you want to uh, participate, please feel free to unmute. Uh, speak up, ask a question, you know, give a comment, give a testimony. Uh, we love that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit mute. And then if uh, Brother Walker and Sister Ford could uh, unmute, I'd appreciate it. All right. All right. Page 17, session two, shaking off fear. The point, God is our defender no matter what we face. God is our defender no matter what we face. Uh, the scripture is Psalm 91, 1 through 6 and 9 through 16. Psalm 9, uh, 91, 1 through 6, 9 through 16. Uh, the memory verse is um, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. We'll repeat that. That's Psalm 91, the first verse. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. The um, three points of the lesson or the lesson focuses are trust God's power, trust God's protection, and walk with God. And again, that's trust God's power, trust God's protection, and walk with God. Just the scripture, the lesson title, and the point, and the points. I mean, we kind of finished. It's 838. I mean, I don't know. It's just some good <laughs> right now already. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, as we've done for these many, many weeks and months, I'm uh, going to have uh, Brother Walker uh, open this up. Yes, as, as part of the prayer this morning, uh, I want to read a couple of verses from uh, Psalms 37, where David talks. And uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. For whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me, even then I will be confident. And this last one I like, verse number four. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Let us bow. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to make this day possible for us, Father, so that we would have eternal life and not eternal death. Continue to bless us, Father. Continue to comfort us. 
continue to give us guidance. Thank you for our church, Brentwood. Thank you for our pastor, Reverend Joe Samuel Ratliff. Thank you for the Sunday school class this morning. Uh, we pray that what we hear and what we read will, will dwell in our hearts and we can apply that each and every day of our lives. It is these blessings we ask in our son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Walker, we appreciate that as always. Um, and um, for those of you that just joined me on page 17, uh, shaking off our fear. I've recovered from my crime from last week. So uh, hopefully, I, look, I might not need to speak too soon. You never know uh, where the Lord is going to lead you. But uh, uh, I appreciate y'all that have reached out to check on your, on your, on your bootleg preacher over here. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, checking on me, make sure I was doing all right. Uh, but um, I, as I read this uh, lesson this week, um, I, I like to break stuff down in simple terms for me to be able to understand it so I can kind of get uh, emotive with, with the scripture. Um, and so um, this first point of the lesson, uh, which I have, which is trust God's power. And this lesson is on fear. And so I, I started thinking like, what was I afraid of when I was a kid? Like, what, what was I afraid of uh, uh, as I was you know, a child? And there were many things. It's the only child, I was scary, I was timid, uh, but I was big. Uh, for my age at every age, including this one at 47. <laughs> uh, but uh, what was I afraid of uh, uh, as a child? And so I can remember, um, you know, I was talking about my great grandmother uh, who lived to be 102 years old, uh, Letha Collins in Barrett Station. Or, or for those of you that are not familiar, Barrett Station is, is, is basically uh, Crosby, uh, but it was the black settlement in, in, uh, in Crosby. And so, we lived for a time um, when my mom was trying to get on our feet in Houston. We moved from Bay City, Texas to Barrett Station. And we lived for a time with Big Mama. And Big Mama had been a sharecropper um, and just a tough, I mean, she just was a tough lady, tough, 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 tough lady. And so um, she was married to Nat Collins uh, and uh, he was much older than her. And uh, you, you guys know before there was assisted living, there was the front room of the house. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So where the hospital bed went, uh, I don't know if we were the only family with that, but when mama or daddy or grandpa or somebody uh, started having issues with being sick, we didn't have assisted living, couldn't afford assisted living if it was there anyway, but, uh, um, you know, we had to have assisted living. We have, you. many of you have walked in the front house and looked to the left or looked to the right and there's been a hospital bed. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was the original assisted living. Uh, I, uh, since I know Miss Morgan's house, she's sitting near her front door right now. Uh, and uh, to the left of her front door, she's in her little living room. So that's where mama or daddy or grandpa or great aunt would be uh, right now. Uh, and so um, um, grandpa and dad have been sick for a while, have been kind of ridden. And long story short, um, just the stuff that big mama would do. So long story short, big mama said, hey, now, by the way, I was five. By the, so me, big mama, grandpa, and dad at the house, I was five. Um, hey, I'm going to run to the store real quick. You watch Nat. Now, I'm five. <laughs> five <laughs> years, I'm watching Nat. <laughs> so watch Nat. Nat in the bed. Uh, he's, he's in the bed. He's faced this way. His, uh, I can see him. I'm sitting at the door, looking through him, looking at the TV. You watch Nat. I'll be right back. Right back was like 45 minutes. So <laughs> uh, looked at me. I uh, saw him kind of moving around, looked at me. I looked at him. Uh, and then uh, I saw Grandpa Nat, you know, they always talk about the death rattle and all that kind of stuff. I saw him take his last breath. He, he passed away while she went to the store. While um, me by myself uh, was there. Uh, uh, and so, long story short, she came back and I said, I think you need to check on Grandpa Nat. Uh, and she went and checked on him, and I, next thing I heard, she was on the phone saying, yeah, he's passed, and then there was, I just have this memory of everybody being at the, at the house. So fast forward to the funeral, and Big Mama always loved me, uh, and uh, wanted me to sit up front when we got to the, to the, 
when we got to the um, cemetery. So I sat in Big Mama's lap. Grandpa Nat, who I watched, was at home by himself when he died, looked at me before he died. Uh, and then the casket right here. And then there's always a gap between the casket and what, uh, what the, uh, where they're going to lower him down. And I looked into that hole. And from that moment on, I was afraid of funerals, right? I was afraid to go to funerals for a long, 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 long time uh, until my grandmother, um, um, we went to a funeral and she held my hand during the whole time. And so why am I bringing up this, this story about Grandpa Nat at, at five years old? Also, uh, Big Mama used to send me down, uh, take this to, to my uh, sister, two blocks down, middle of the night, no lights. I mean, six years old. Like, what, I mean, what's going on in the country where you just see <laughs> people, little five-year-olds watching, you know, people, that's just crazy. Anyway, uh, I digress. Uh, my point is that I was afraid for a very, very long time until I got support. Uh, and so I don't know about you guys, but when we are afraid, it always feels better when when somebody is there with us, right? So some of you might have been afraid of the dark and you would go and get in your parents' bed or or get in your brother's bed. They joke, uh, the joke around Cher's family, my wife's family is, uh, you know, uh, she was afraid of the dark or just afraid in general. And so um, she would sleep in the same room with her sister had twin beds and they would uh, start off in separate beds, Cher would get in the bed with the sister. The sister would, because Cher sleeps bad. Not, she's not anymore, but she sleep, used to sleep bad. Uh, and she would, the sister would switch over, and then here comes Cher later on. So she just would, they would play bed hop all night, just to, because she just needed to have somebody right with her. And that's what God does. Like when we're afraid, that's what he does. And so I'm reading, I'm going to read the scripture. I just wanted to start off. I just wonder, what were y'all afraid of when you were a child, and how did you get over it? So you have a story or you have uh, 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 something you want to put in the chat or, you know, unmute as I, uh, after I read the scripture. But what, what some of us, some of you are senior saints uh, and you still may be afraid of some things. Uh, but are there any things that you were afraid of when you were a child that you look back on as, and, and like, wow, what, what got me over that fear? Right. And so as we start here, Psalms 91. It says, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the uh, shadow of the Almighty. I will say concerning the Lord, who is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, he himself will rescue you from the bird trap, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with his feathers. You will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a proactive shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow that uh, flies by day, the plague, I'm sorry, plague that stalks in the darkness or the pestilence that ravages at noon. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah. Don't be scared. That's what it's saying. Don't be scared because we live in the shadow uh, of the Almighty. It's easy to say that. It's really hard sometimes for us to uh, to act uh, that out. And so, what are you afraid of? Right? What are you afraid of? Right? Some of us are afraid of, of, of still afraid of the dark. I don't like coming into a dark house. You know, give me some some uh, light. Some of you are afraid of what's going to happen in life. Some of you are afraid of uh, other things that go on, um, you know, that you're going to be by yourself or that a loved one is going to pass away, right? But the Bible says in Psalms 91, the Psalm says, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty, which is really saying is you live not only under the protection of God, but just his shadow is enough, right? Right? Just this shadow uh, is enough. And so as we talk about fear, <clears throat> when I do some, uh, used to speak uh, quite a bit, I used to use an acronym that some of you may have heard for fear, uh, which fear stands for false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Uh, and so that's what fear is. It's false evidence appearing real. Now, there are some good types of fear. Your, your book talks about uh, this where, uh, you know, uh, if you 
see Russian water and, and, and uh, not, you know, you shouldn't jump into it, right? Or there's some healthy fear as to uh, if you uh, are out at night and somebody's, you know, following you uh, and you go somewhere to, to, that's lit and with some other folks, that's, that's a healthy fear. That's protecting you. That's what God has given us. But there's some irrational fears that we live with that to me only God can can uh, uh, can take. And so a lot of times when I thought about the question that I asked you guys, what was I afraid of as a child? No matter what I thought of, I always felt better if uh, <laughs> someone would come with me, right? Yeah. With, having someone right beside me always made me feel better, even if they were scared. Right, <laughs> me and my cousins. Even what's that? What's going on? But at least we're in it together, brother. I'm not here by myself. Right? We might be in our PJs, and there might be a dog outside. Or uh, I can remember. Uh, I think I told y'all the. I told y'all the Smurf story. Can't remember if I told y'all the Smurf story. Uh, oh, I told my PhD. So, so back in Missouri City, back in the day, Ms. Morgan, uh, when in Missouri City Junior High, um we would get on the bus and we'd get to school and then it would be a rumor that the Smurfs were coming. The Smurfs were coming. And it was this gang that we had heard that would kill children, that would take children. And it was like, a big thing, like the Smurfs were coming. And I, you know, it might sound funny to y'all now, but back in the day, you know, we was like, oh my gosh. So all throughout the day, this is before social media, it, everybody be in class, hey man, I heard the Smurfs are coming today, man. Y'all, ooh, it's going, ooh, the Smurfs are coming. And so they were supposed to be this murderous gang called the Smurfs. And so you would get on the bus, because all of us rode the bus, and you'd get on the bus and everybody, like, man, the Smurfs are coming. And so at every bus stop, every bus stop, they would see it. The bus driver would stop, open the door, the kids on that stop would get off, and all you would see is kids running with backpacks and pencils flying, because they were scared that the Smurfs was coming. The Smurfs were coming. Now, by the way, never saw a Smurf, ever. Urban legend, never saw a Smurf. But we were scared, we were fearful of some Smurfs. But I can remember being scared of the Smurfs, but also being uh, so happy that I was running with other people, that I wasn't by myself. And then I always felt bad for, you know, it was always one or two bus stops where it was like that one person that's the only at that one bus stop, and they would be running by themselves. And I'm like, ooh, I hope the Smurfs don't get them because they by themselves, right? So the urban, just, just being with someone, it makes, gives you comfort when you are afraid. Not realizing, and right now, as we're in adults, that God is always with us. Amen. We sit in his shadow, as the scripture says, I will say concerning the Lord, who is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, he himself will rescue you from the bird trap, from the destructive plague. Right? Mm -hmm. So God has us. He got us. And I think sometimes we get spiritual amnesia and, and forget. Oh, I'm dealing with all oh, oh. I'm dealing with all this. I'm by myself. No. Oh, if you're a believer, you're not by yourself. Right? It's hard because we want a tangible, someone literally right there. But God is literally uh, right there. And so uh, he will cover you with his feathers. Uh, you will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. He's faithful to us. I know we're supposed to be faithful to him. Right, yeah. but he is faithful to us, and so therefore, that is a protective uh, shield, right? So I didn't need to be running from the Smurfs. I could have been walking, right? But I, I still ran. But I didn't understand. Yeah. As I thought as a child. Now the Smurfs is coming up. I'm I'm good, right? Because yeah. I know that God is 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 with me. Still might walk fast though. You never know. Uh, so you will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow flies by day, the plague that stalks in darkness or the pestilence that ravages uh, at noon. What that says to me is if you really know God and you really of God, you don't have to worry about all the things that surround you that might make you fearful because God has your, your back, right? Things in life may happen. You know, we talked about last week, uh, grief and death and, you know, like I said, I got emotional thinking about my grandfather and things of that nature. Uh, but that to me is different than, than fear. No one wants their loved one to pass away, but it, death is a part of life. The Bible talks about that uh, as well. And so therefore, all these other things that we fear, God has us. And it's just reminding ourselves, as we talked about the fundamentals of our faith, it's reminding ourselves uh, that 
we do have someone with us. So we won't have to be afraid of the dark, right? Because God is with us. We don't have to be afraid of sickness because God is with us. We don't have to be afraid of people in our family and in our jobs because God is with us. And we really know that, yeah. that kind of different. You kind of step into that darkness. I'm good. I got somebody with me, right? I got somebody with me. I can remember, uh, now this is my last until um, um, when I was talking about bus stops, I got jumped like sixth, seventh grade. I was a good kid, Ms. Morgan. I always thought Ms. Morgan, but she knew I was a sweet kid. I don't know why they wanted to jump me, Ms. Morgan, but they did. They jumped me, three of them, uh, and beat me up pretty good. Got on the bus, the bus driver was like, dang, what happened to you? Dude, you beat me up. Uh, and so we went to Missouri City Middle School. Bus driver stopped the bus, told him to stop. Went and got the principal, got suspended. Told my mom, called my mama, um, stayed at school, I looking like this, literally. I hear everybody like, dang, what happened to you? Oh my God, whatever, get home. Um, mom looks at me, you know, of course mad. And then all of a sudden, I said, well, I'll just start, I used to walk a couple blocks to go catch the bus, what, what I thought to be my buddies. And so well, I'm gonna just start, to, you know, catching the bus here. She's like, no, 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 now we going back. And I'm, what, what are you talking about? I'm not going back where they just beat me up. Oh no, no, we going back. So my mom, being the single mom she was and raised by that tough grandmother I told you about, uh, great grandmother, she taught me, I was a latchkey kid, I had keys. So she taught me to put the keys in between my hands like this. Y'all see this right here? And she said, if they mess with you, you put them keys right here and, and, and you fight back. I'm like, this lady is crazy. My mom birthday yesterday, so shout out to my mom. Lady, it's crazy. What are you doing? Send me back out here to be slaughtered again by myself uh, and teaching me about these keys. So went back the next week, first day, nothing, second day, nothing, third day, nothing, got to Friday. They did it again. I got the keys out and something about my mom knowing that she was with me and she taught me this. And then she uh, also remember her saying, uh, she said, if I don't teach you how to fight for yourself now, you'll never learn. That was running in my head, whatever. So that took the fear away. And I, a couple swings, they got me a couple, they, they got me again, I ain't gonna run. But at least I fought and I wasn't afraid, right? I wasn't afraid. And so I say all that to say, I guess y'all think, man, his childhood, good Lord, brother, we need to pray for you. Um, I knew that because my mom had given me what I need, that I wasn't afraid. And that's what God uh, gives. He may not give us the keys, um, but he gives us the keys to not being afraid by knowing that we are with him. And so with that point, I will end Brother Walker. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Reverend Kevin. Uh, I just heard a, a, thou, a loud yeah, I did too. <laughs> I don't know God was like, man, like this. this uh, yeah, 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 I used to be afraid of the thunder, by the way. Well, so. yeah, yeah, that's where I was going. You said, what, what were you afraid of? Well, in the country, those houses weren't insulated that well. So when we heard that th loud thunder and the lightning yes, and lit the house up, we had to turn all the lights out. Man. Turn, the light out yeah, turn the lights out. That's exactly right. <laughs> turn the lights out. So when you want to talk about being afraid there for a while. <laughs> But uh, God bless you. You know, you mentioned last week when we, our topic was walking in grief. And, I, and I, when we, I started reading this, the lesson shaking off fear, I, I could kind of see the parallel. You know, God is God. You know, in grief, we call on him, we rest in him, and we trust him and walk in, with him. And that last topic last week had to do with trusting in, in God. And now we, we get into the, the topic of fear and trust, that word trust still prevails. Trust in God. So my topic here is uh, trust God's protection. Now, you know, as, as we read these songs, we have to keep in mind that it's a continuous story. So in our authors in the book, they try to, uh, 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 and they do a good job of, of giving us topics or different angles uh, uh, of the Psalms or of the verses. But, but overall, the message is pretty clear and, and it's the same throughout. So some of the points I'm going to, going to make with uh, in my presentation echo with what Reverend Kevin has said. Now, my overarching, uh, my scripture reading is from nine, nine, Psalms 91, 9 through 13. And I want to do my overarching point before I read my scriptures. I don't want to do like I did last week. I got caught up in my overarching points and didn't go through my read my scriptures like I wanted to, but I, 
I've got a clue to myself this week. My overarching point this week and, and trust God's protection is, has kept echoed what Reverend Kevin was saying pretty much. We do not have to be afraid of life circumstances because if we've chosen to make the Lord our refuge, we are under his protection. Therefore, Nothing can harm a child of God unless the Lord permits. Now, a couple of things before I move there is that uh, you, if we've chosen to make the Lord, that means we've accepted the Lord as our, our Lord and Savior and accepted salvation at that point. Because uh, uh, without that, then all this, what we're talking this morning is, is flying over everybody's head who has not accepted the Lord. Uh, we, once we accept salvation, we're under his protection, and we become a child of God. And God is the one that protects us, and he permits any harm to come to us. But the point is that regardless of any generation, as we were saying, any type of threats that we just talked about, God's scripture, his word, his promises always prevail, that he promises to protect us. And some of those threats that we were talking about, you know, growing up, we fast forward to today and we see this COVID, we see injustice, we see crime, we see several other threats out there that uh, can, uh, can harm us. And we have personal issues or, or challenges that can harm us also. So I'm gonna read my verses uh, from nine to 13. And it says, because you, have made the Lord my refuge, the most high, your dwelling place. No harm will come to you. No plague will come near your tent. For he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent. Now, the first point I want to make is talking about God's protection and seeking his refuge and, and kind of pulling verses 9 and 10. Uh, the point I have here is those who seek refuge in the Lord, our most high, take up residence with him, can shake off the fear, fear of harm. In other words, it's the same thing we've just talked about. If, we, if we've accepted God, and we, he is our protector. We have sought him out as our refuge. Then we are protected against any harm, hurt, harm, and danger, as they used to say. And God is our safe place of refuge. God's refuge is our safety net. Like Reverend Kevin was saying, if you want to be with somebody, and I've got a point here that's going to bring this out real, real, real good, I think. So the question then is, how do I make God my refuge? And I found Psalms 62, verses 7 through 8, where David says, my self, verse 7, my salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. And verse 8 says, trust in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is your refuge. Well, Again, that echoes what, what I've just said, that we have to accept God as our, our Lord and Savior through salvation. And secondly, it, 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 we talk about trust, trusting in God at all times. You know, that's the amen moment here. And, and, and I have here where it says, there's no situation that we'll ever face that will be out of God's control. Let me say that again. There's no situation in life that we'll ever face that will be out of God's control. So now I'm, I'm appealing to spiritual common sense at this play, point. If that be the case, it would make spiritual common sense that the best place to be is right with God. So that's for any unbeliever out there or anyone who has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ this morning to hear that, 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 that the best place to be is with God because he has us covered. David also says in that verse, pour out your heart to him and he will protect you. So what does it mean to pour out your heart? I think you can, you can translate that as to how 
we feel about our families in particular, in our own house, our children, our wives, our, our, our parents, if they're still living, grandparents. You know, the more we interact with them, the more we interact with them, the, the, the more they feel more, we feel a refuge in them, they feel a refuge in, in us, but we all feel a refuge in God because that we know that God is our strength and he is our salvation and he is our mighty rock. So there's no rocket science to what, what we're saying this morning. I, I was reading this, I said, God bless the, the psalmist whom I read in here that was not identified uh, that wrote this name or something. So we keep moving along and it also says, for he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. Now that's a blessing. And we get into the topic of angels. And, and we all know that the, the angels are, are messengers, that heavenly beings that are sent to carry out God's command or instructions to us to, to guide us in, 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 along with, with God's will. It's all provided through God's will. So the author lists a few examples of of what the, the angels, uh, why God sends the angels or the, the duties of the angels or function of the angel themselves to study us. You know, that means uh, keep us straight pretty much on, on, on a straight narrow path. It also means they lift us up when we're down, they carry us, they sustain us uh, through life's difficulties. You know, life, when life's good, we don't even, we just keep striding right along. It's when we get run into trouble and difficulties that we call on the Lord and call on the angel. And then it, it, it got to this topic of, of God and angels, guardian angels. You know, that angel that, that, that walks and, and stays with us. Uh, uh, it, the scriptures give some examples of, of how the angel leads us and directs us. And I, I remember in Acts, I forget the chapter uh, where Peter, there was prayer that was going on for Peter and Peter was chained down and the angels came and loosened the chains and, 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 and led him out of the, the jail, right past the, 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 the guardsmen. The gates were locked and the angel said, come on, don't, don't worry. Peter thought he was seeing a vision there, but the gates all of a sudden came unlocked. So that's, if, if we all reflect sometime, we can, we can identify where God, angel has been with us and, 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 and accompanied us and, and actually led us out of whatever danger that might prevail. I was listening to a, a, a person was saying how they got caught in traffic and that they thought they ought to go one route and, their man told them to go another route and they made a bad decision that it took a couple of hours on that route they, they, they took. And I got to thinking, I remember Reverend Radcliffe talking, uh, preaching a sermon once, we never know what God has planned for us. You know, it could have been an accident waiting for you on the route that you, you wanted to, to travel, but it could have been an angel that directed you to that other route while time you wasn't necessarily in a hurry we save your life, you know, it's a possibility. But they're all type of stories that we can, it can reflect on about angels. And the one that came to mind for me as I move on was in Luke 8, 16, 22. Uh, it talks about how the angels take care of the righteous at the time of death. Now that's a particular one with me when, you, when, I, when I buried my mother and we were all driving away from the cemetery and I looked back at the graveyard, nobody was out there. And I thought about it, is she out there by herself now? But Luke 16, 22 said, the time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to the Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. So God is, sends the angels with us at the time of death. So we're never alone as Reverend Kevin was saying earlier. God's always with us. So why not trust him? Why have fear? The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Now, I, I know there are circumstances in life that come up 
where we're going to fear. But that's why we come each Sunday so we can and study the word of God and understand what, what God wants us and how he wants us to act in, in, in the light of being fearful. That remember that he's always with us. Real quickly, it talked about uh, Satan, how Satan tempted Christ in, in Matthews uh, 4, 5 through 6, where he challenged, Satan challenged uh, Christ's divinity to ask Jesus to, to, to if, if you, uh, then the devil took him and to the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it's written, he will give his angels orders concerning you and they will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Well, you know, that points out that the angel, this, this Satan knows scripture also. But the bigger issue here, uh, the bigger point is that Christ responded in that, in that, that seventh verse of Matthew 4, when Jesus answered, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to test. So the point here is that God's protection is for us is grounded in our faithfulness and our obedience. And that that being said, that we should act responsibly, not foolishly. We should not be in a, in a we should live our lives in faithfulness and obedience and not allow our lives to act recklessly to try to test God or thinking God will just pull us through each and every time because God has lessons out there for us sometimes. Uh, as I move along and close, uh, be, you know, I go back to verse nine where it says, because you have made the Lord my refuge, the most high, your dwelling place. Now I wanted, I wanted to step here with this dwelling place which is to me like the refuge, you know, our dwelling place, the first thing comes to mind is, is the house of the Lord. As David was saying, when I read the earlier uh, Psalms 27, when uh, real quickly, when I used to clean the church and take care of the yards and everything like that and clean the inside and I was paid each month for it. You know, when I got in trouble, I'd sneak into the church to pray. But all week long, I'd wait until I take, took time to go to the church and pray, not knowing that I could just pray the same prayer right where I was. I thought it was more, the more God would hear me more if I was in the church praying and asking for forgiveness for some of the things I had done. But we all know today that God hears our call wherever we are. So as I close, the question on page uh, 20 talks about the steps of, of of, of how to make God your dwelling place. But I found where I, one of the commentaries that read also how to make God your dwelling place. And it's all centered around love. First Corinthians 13, three uh, says that three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Now we know that the faith, hope, and love are all centered in the heart. You can't get by that. So. There are four quick points I want to make regarding how in a practical way each and every day that we make, how we make God our dwelling place. First one is to love prayer. You know, prayer is our way we talk to God, praying without ceasing. We know 1 Thessalonians talks about that. The fifth chapter talks about pray without ceasing. Give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances. So you want to know how to dwell in God's, in God's place, dwelling place? Love to pray. Continue to pray. And I see that every week we come in here to our Sunday school. Second one is love God's house. Well, that was David in, in Psalms 122. One said, I, we all for me with this house. It's glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. David loved the house of worship. And he desired to go into the house of the Lord. And that's where we are, see what we all get up to come to Sunday school on Sunday morning. It's, that's obvious. So love God's house. And, and as we love God's house and come in and worship, that automatically allows us to get an opportunity to dwell closer to God. Number three is love God's word. Well, the word, the word that God gives us is the bread of our life, pretty much. You know, it, it, when we hear and read the scripture, it, it, it brings us closer to God. It puts us in the presence of God. It shows our hearts. It, 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 God rewards us with the spirit for the things that he's pleased with. 
but it also puts a mirror to our hearts for the gaps that we may have and where we need improvement. And lastly, number four is for a practical way of, of, of uh, dwelling closer to God is to love God's people. And that means love each other, brothers and sisters. We are all one family, Christ is the head. And I'll end this by saying, 1 John 4, 20 reads that whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. So ending my, my, my topic and going to Sister Ford, that, that God, trust God's protection, trust God's power. And now we're gonna to go to Sister Ford by walking with God. But I'm gonna go back to Reverend Kevin first to see what he has comments. Amen. I'm, I'm good, Sister Ford is yours. <laughs> good morning, everyone. This last section is set is walk with God. Psalms 91, 14 through 16. The scripture reads, because he has his heart set on me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. In the beginning of this uh, scripture, this, this chapter 91, it appears that the psalmist is speaking for himself. And then he goes to what the Lord actually says. As the Lord responds to Psalms 91, one through 13, there are two because phrases in verse 14. The first is because he has his heart set on me. This person is lovingly devoted to the Lord. The world does not want to know or understand the Lord who wants to know and have a relationship with them. Pastor Radliff did a sermon citing verses with the Lord's promises. The Lord's promises were for those who love him, for those who have their hearts set on the Lord. The Lord did act in the past as described in verses nine, one through 15. The Lord will also respond in the future. The Lord's number two is because he knows my name. In the King James Version of the Bible, the Lord's name is written in all capital letters. Again, in Exodus 3, 13 through 15, the Lord's name is I am. I am the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. This is my name forever. Hallowed be thy name. Thinking about names, I know Michael Jordan's name, but I don't think he will hand me $1,000 just because I ask him. I don't know him like that, and he definitely don't know me. This no is not just knowing the Lord's name. No is a relationship with the Lord. Part of the Lord's response to us is the promises he makes. Some of those promises are the I will statements in these verses that are noted in these verses. In verse 14, he says, I will deliver him. I will protect him. Verse 15, I will answer him. I will be with him. I will rescue him. And in verse 16, it says, I will satisfy him. Altogether, there are six I will promises. In verse 15, when he calls out to me, I will answer. It is a repeat of the Psalms 116.1, the song version of, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. When I call out to him, he will answer. Most important, the Lord says, I will be with him. Psalms 23.4, he says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And some of these promises, the Lord adds a bonus. In verse 15, the bonus part B is that as he is being rescued, the Lord will also give him honor. To honor is to let him know how valuable he is to the Lord. Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes and said, all is vanity, all is futile. Solomon described how he had the wealth and power to obtain and do anything he wanted. But he discovered that the wealth and power could not satisfy him. Something was still missing. During his time as king, Solomon began to move away from a relationship with the Lord. The Lord was the only one who could satisfy what was missing for Solomon. In verse 16, the Lord says, I will satisfy him. The bonus part of the last I will statement is, 
I will show him my salvation. The Lord's salvation is complete and absolute. It cannot be taken away. Them that love the Lord, that have their hearts set on the Lord, can count on the promises of the Lord. Psalms 23, 4 says, again, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord is with us and takes away our fears. One night I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand, and I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never, ever. During your trials and testing, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. I love this poem, Footprints, because it, I picture me being in the arms of the Lord, always in the arms of the Lord, like a little child being carried and nurtured. Kevin said, being with someone gives you comfort. Being with the Lord gives you comfort. Amen. 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 Uh, Sister Ford and Brother Walker, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we have some comments in the in the chat. Uh, and so uh, as we as I read these comments, I just want to bring this up for those of you that are uh, on the app. Y'all can see me sharing my screen here. And uh, uh, that, that is a picture that I have up in my office. For those of you that are on the phone, that picture says, uh, do, I have to remind myself of this. That's why it's up in my office. That picture says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid is written in the Bible 365 times. That's a daily reminder to live every day fearless. So that's actually up in my office. My I face that when I'm sitting at my desk in my office. So this was a post mm -hmm. uh, that I posted on Facebook almost a, a year ago. Uh, I didn't. I didn't need to shave, so excuse that. But with that being said, that do not be afraid is written, and uh, I love the story uh, that uh, uh, that Cheryl uh, reminded us of footst uh, footsteps in the sand uh, yeah. as well. And so, with that being said, I've asked uh, about fear earlier on. I just want to make sure I get to the comments since we have a little bit of time here at the end. Uh, and so, uh, Sherilyn Smith. Uh, Sister Smith said, when I was in school, we were blessed to have a teacher who taught the Bible in our literature and history classes. Uh, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Rosman Benson had us learn this psalm. And I, I've often read and say this when I'm uh, aboard a plane. Amen. This, this is, I, I think this is the plane. They should have this inscribed on the side of the plane. So, you know, just let you go and read it, you know, before you get out, you need something. I, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. By the way, I, I've told you guys, my wife has a has a process uh, at night, you know, as far as her wind down and, and spiritual, whatever. This is what she reads out loud. This uh, Psalm 91 reads out loud. And y'all know she's relatively quiet, but I, I sit in the kitchen and let's just say our bedroom is far away. I can hear her out here basically screaming this uh, sometimes, whatever. So this calms her spirit uh, as well. Uh, Sister Gloria said also, our front room had beds to accommodate the number of people living there. You're right. It just wasn't for the hospital bed. It was for cousin them, family, and everybody. It was a little turn in the bedroom. Sometimes you have a sheet uh, right there in that little part, so you have a little separate door. Yeah, we yeah, we feel you. We, we all black. I know. I mean, come on. Uh, and so uh, also Psalm 127, the ones that uh, helped me, it says, uh, accept the Lord, um, build a house. They labor in vain. Uh, that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. I learned God was watching over me so I could even sleep. Um, and then we had, 
Sister Smith says again, pour out your heart means to me to verbalize out loud what you need so that not only God can hear your needs, but you can hear them as well. I do think it's important that Amen. you say your fears and things out loud as well, because sometimes you're running them in your head and just hearing them kind of soothes your spirit as well. Tammy says, Amen. fear. Uh, I hope that I would never lose the love of God. I hope I'm always in his good grace. Uh, amen to that. Uh, Clarence, Brother Clarence says, I asked in the, in the chat, what do you guys fear? Uh, and um, Clarence said, I fear the power of evil men and women. Amen to that. Uh, and we're going to pray for the power of good men and women tomorrow when they vote on these electoral votes, just in case nobody... Uh, I don't know if that's what you meant, Brother Clarence, but there's some, there's some, there's some uh, craziness going on out there. But yeah, the power of evil men uh, and women. And then Sister Gloria ends with saying, overcoming fear has been a bit of a uh, progressive for me from the childhood types of fears to the teenage types of fears, adult types uh, that change and continue, et cetera, senior adulthood uh, ones, but our good, but our good, all powerful Lord God has been present all along. So I had to grow uh, in the to recognize his wonderful continued presence in all fearful situations. This lesson, yeah. as Smith says, this lesson is a wonderful reminder that God is with us in this pandemic and all of uh, the hate that is going on in this country. Amen uh, to yeah. that. Amazing how these uh, these lessons, you know, that I'm sure plan uh, a year in advance at least, uh, come right on time. Walking in grief. Uh, last week was right on time for me uh, dealing with uh, family members that have passed away, sh shaking off the fear as this vaccine comes out. Um, and um, yes, I'm taking a vaccine. That's a whole nother Sunday school lesson. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you, Reverend Kevin. <laughs> some of y'all are fearful. Uh, you know, I posted something on Facebook that said uh, there was a little made up conversation that, are you going to take the vaccine when it comes? And I, you know, the, the thing says, yes. Like, you going to take it even though you don't know? The guy says, I also eat chicken McNuggets. I don't know what's in them either. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, you know, we eat stuff and the McRib just came out uh, as well. So, you know, look, I'm, I, I have to take it. And I just hope that uh, some of you will consider taking it as well because uh, studies show that um, people are fearful. Over 50% of people are fearful of taking it or not going to take it. And then in the African American community, that's like 70%. Uh, 70 to uh, 80% of us are fearful of taking it. But um, I know it's coming from the administration that we don't necessarily trust. Um, but if 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 Fauci takes it and the other three takes it, uh, the president's, I'm going to take it. So y'all can email me later. Y'all got my email because I sent y'all a video. So if you want to debate, let's let's get on, let's get in your fingers and, and, and talk about it. Um, did I see a hand up? I thought I saw a hand up. Somebody hit the hand raise button. Uh, did I see that? Brother Clarence, was that you or Sister Smith? No? Are you about to say something? Okay, you good? Okay, all right, cool. All right, so with that, do not be afraid. Um, occurs in the Bible 365 times. That means it's one for every day of the week, uh, I mean, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, year. Uh, and so we just want you to, to live a life of um, non-fear, knowing uh, that God uh, is with us. So Amen. Um, let us pray and then I'll give the announcements. Father God, thank you for allowing us to come together. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for our teachers, but most importantly, God, we thank you for our Sunday school students and our Sunday school in general. God, we just thank you for this, the regularness of this, the opportunity to be able to see and hear each other's voice on a consistent basis. We know that uh, honestly, we can't be, uh, we're not as fearful if we're uh, with other people. And even this on Sunday mornings at 8.30 in the morning, it just takes a little bit of fear just knowing that we're going to see and hear people that are in this fight with us. God, as we go throughout this week, we just ask that you uh, allow us to remember uh, uh, that 365 times in the Bible where you say, do not be afraid. In the Sanjay's name we pray. Amen. All right. 9.30, uh, prayer meeting, 10 o'clock church. If you give into the Sunday school, you look at uh, Gloria's email, you'll see the accounts that if you uh, would please denote an account. All right. And then for those of you that want to stay on, uh, Gloria's going to stay on with you and uh, y'all going to ride together to prayer meeting. Y'all going to ride together to, to Sunday uh, church the whole night. I mean, y'all get to ride together, stay on the same bus and everything. I mean, just 
talking about buses and I was trying to tie it back to what I was saying. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, it's good to see y'all. Every, everybody got some new faces. Some people turned on their cameras this week. I, I preach. I see you, Mary Quimby. I see you. I see you, Mary Quimby. Uh, uh, I, I, I see you, Brother Jeffrey. Brother Jeffrey is out there too. Yeah, there you go. Come on now. Come on, Brother Jeffrey. Yeah, I see no, you. No, that brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, there we go. I love to hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't wait to get back to the church house, see uh, Brother Jeffrey running them laps up front. Yeah, yeah. yeah, hey, yeah. I'm waiting too, brother. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. I know you can't. I know you can't. It's I can't good wait, to, good got to see you. Got plenty of praise to offer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hallelujah. 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 Absolutely. You know, it's 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 funny. Um we might be running with Jeff for next time. Yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. We're gonna get a run on the first day we back. We're gonna get a run on. You know, it's funny how we take things for granted. You know, you see That's Brother right. Jeffrey up there and you just know it's his story and then his praise and things of that nature. And you kind of get used to it, to be honest with you. Now that we haven't had it, like, you know, you you miss the kind of regularity of, of what happens yeah. at church and the people and yeah. the, where people sit and what they do and how they sing and this, that, and the other. So uh, I say that in all love. Uh, I'm, I'm messing with him. Uh, but, but uh you know, you, you miss uh, the regularity of, 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 of our church church going. So that's right. Uh, it's all love, brother. All love. Uh, uh, hey, so brother Kevin, before you close out, yes, sir. tomorrow is over with. Remind folk the electors meet tomorrow and tell Donald Trump to stop. Yeah, they, there you go. It's around, over with. Around yep. three, four o'clock, we should we should uh, do all this craziness should be uh, uh, should be over with. So uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and then it's then it'll be time to take the vaccine. Absolutely, I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Just more here. <laughs> I'm taking. It. Can, can Brother Jeffrey close us out with a hallelujah? Hallelujah! <laughs> All right. Hallelujah! Yes, yes, yes. Three. Yes. <laughs> All right, yes, just go ahead. All right. Give you three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brother Jeff. Appreciate you. Thank you, Brother. All right, sister. Thank you, Sister Morgan. <laughs> Morgan. Thank you, sister. All right. Let me make uh, Sister Gloria our host here. All righty. We'll Gloria, see if we can share the screen. You had the keys.